Welcome back to another episode of the Checkmate Theory, where we talk about lifestyle, business, and making moves. In today's episode, we have Alpha Carbo, the CEO and co-founder of Crypt Central. How you doing, my brother? I'm very, very good. How have you been? And thank you for having me. Oh, that's absolutely fine, man. My pleasure. And I've been very well, bro. You know, just keeping productive. Um, it's the only way to go, getting those episodes out and bringing value to the people. Yeah, um, you've had a, a crazy work rate. You've been putting your pedals to the metal. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> um, so, what's the new with you, bro? Um, just been working, making sure that every single day is productive and uh, sort of gearing the business towards the next step as we're in a pivotal point. 100%. So, from the start, we've had these discussions before. Um, from the start, are you still following the same time frame or have you pivoted since? Um, the time frame has changed quite a bit. Um, not too drastically, but there has been changes. Um, just considering the whole climate, the economic climate, and then the fundraising climate with what's going on right now. So um, we're probably about two months behind our original sort of roadmap. Okay, that's absolutely fine. You can't rush greatness. Um, to our listeners as well, things don't go to plan. Is how you adjust and pivot to stay aligned to your goal and, and be focused. Um, so can you tell us a bit more about your background, where you're from, what's your expertise? So our listeners get to, you know, um, have a bit more about you before, you know, you be getting to the topical stage. Okay. Um, so my name is Alpha Carbo. I am 21 years old. Originally, I am from Sierra Leone, but I grew up in Ireland. I moved to London about five, six or seven years ago. I'm not too sure. Um, probably around six years. And it's definitely been like a defining period in my life. Um, aside from that, I'm pre- like pre- you can pretty much say I'm nerdy. I'm into all the finance and tech stuff, and uh, it's been interesting me for a while. I studied finance undergraduate, and yeah, I really enjoyed every minute of it. And I'm looking forward to seeing sort of what we can do in that area and that field down the line. Cool. So you said you're from Ireland. So do you class yourself as an island islander or a Londoner? Definitely has to be an islander. I think. My Irish nature sort of is deep rooted inside me, and although London has added tremendous, like tremendous value to my life, um, there's obviously the very foundations of you as a person was built and was developed where you come from. So 100%. yeah, definitely Irish. Hundred <laughs> percent. All right, so we're gonna just um, start with the first question, just so our listeners can understand of what the whole discussion is going to be about and uh, yeah. we're all on the same page. So my first question to you, my brother, is could you explain what cryptocurrency is to our listeners? Now, for those who don't know. Yeah, so um, cryptocurrency generally is very, very, very wide topic and it's multidimensional and it's multi-layered. But if we're speaking on Bitcoin, for example, which is like sort of, it not, it's not even sort of, it's just the pinnacle and the gold standard of um, cryptocurrency. Um, it's sort of a store of value and the way it works is it's on top of blockchain layers and without getting too technical you can just think of it as like a network of computers that mine new coins just like we mine gold and th- this network also processes transaction fees and makes sure that for example everything is validated so if you're spending a certain amount you can't spend more than you have in your wallet and everything along those lines so that is cryptocurrency there are loads of different sorts of the angles that can go. There's payment, pro, there's payment processing cryptocurrencies. There's um, just like decentralized applications of dApps. And then there's just things like Bitcoin, which are store of value. Thank you very much. Um, so what sparked your interest in cryptocurrency? And when did this um, love for cryptocurrency um, start? So for me... I first heard about cryptocurrency through a friend of mine who was telling me about this thing called Bitcoin mining. And it was 2016 and I was thinking, what is Bitcoin mining and what is Bitcoin? So I checked the website and when I went on the website, bear in mind I was quite younger. So I saw loads of zeros and ones and I was thinking, what, what does this even mean? Like, what's it doing? What's it trying to show? It was, it was too complicated. So I left cryptocurrency, never looked back at it again for like another year. And it was now 2017, about February or March. So I put money in and then obviously we had the bull run of 2017 in December, um, but I didn't put into the right cryptocurrencies. <laughs> so although I didn't make some money, I pulled my money out too quickly and just I basically 
held for too long as well. And I lost all the profits and ended up in a loss. And funnily, that loss is what made me love cryptocurrency. Um, that loss taught me a lot. It was an expensive lesson, but it definitely sparked interest. And I saw that, okay, there's real merit here. And seeing the retail interest just grow exponentially in like a J-curve, I was thinking, yeah, there's something here. And then also there's retail, not institutional talk as well, of institutional players joining cryptocurrency. So from then on, I was just like, yeah, this is the future. Definitely. So we were introduced to cryptocurrency around the same t- uh, same time, 2016. Um, yeah. But as soon as I seen cryptocurrency, done uh, more research, read the white paper, uh, it really piqued my interest. Uh, but at that time, I hadn't I hadn't have that much money to invest in myself. So I quickly ran to my dad. I said, "Just everything I learned, I just regurgitating it out. You know, this yeah. information, information." I said, "Dad, please give me ten thousand pounds. Let me invest into this." <laughs> He's looking at me like what are you talking about 10,000 yeah. you know, I've never asked him for that much he's so thinking a gal just like just go yeah, what is this bitcoin magical, I'm talking about internet internet money sure yeah. <laughs> as soon as I mentioned internet he was like is this boy stupid internet yeah. he's what he's going to get scammed and then a few months has passed um, and he's coming up to me saying oh we're talking about this uh, like when um, bitcoin reached uh, on the, on the 17 news. yeah nearly nearly 20,000 pounds for one yeah. bitcoin I said, oh, so, oh we're talking about this i said yeah uh, like i was, I was try- trying to tell you but we could have had we could have had 100,000 by, by now through through that investment and he's like oh, okay he just shrugged his shoulders so i was like oh, when would when would the older generation see the value Bitcoin holds it's, it is really a commodity uh, yeah, but that so. burn since then I was just doing, being doing research and just getting my own money up and then yeah. investing slowly uh, since then I've been investing uh, just under 250 a month into mm. Bitcoin and different currencies um, so a bit more to our listeners to where they can buy Bitcoin um, there's websites like Coin uh, Coinbase and uh, where I buy my bitcoins from um an app called gravity uh is an ecosystem and uh the bitcoin bank of the future so if you do want to invest into cryptocurrency in a trusted on a trusted platform um i definitely definitely recommend gravity and if you want the link send me a dm or you will find it on the show notes below so brother so that sparked your interest in cryptocurrency so yeah. I'm just going to follow on with that and say Bitcoin, Ethereum and Litecoin are all global currencies. How would crypto benefit Africa? Um, so like I said, there is loads of different verticals that cryptocurrencies focus on. And I think in Africa, one of the biggest problems is infrastructure. And I'm very passionate about infrastructure. You can catch me speak about infrastructure all day, whether it's like tech infrastructure, physical infrastructure or anything along those lines. But yeah, payment infrastructure is horrible in Africa, to be quite frank. And it's definitely lagging behind the Western world. I think if cryptocurrencies like Ripple, so XRP, they are focused on efficient payments and sort of cross-border payments and doing it quickly and low fees. I think if Africa had that, that would be extremely beneficial because a lot of the GDP or a large percentage of the GDP comes from sort of remittances from the diaspora. So if instead of having to go to like Western unions or anything along those lines and being able to do it from your phone and sort of the people in Africa are able to take that cryptocurrency, go to an ATM or anything along those lines and then withdraw the funds through the power of cryptocurrency and blockchain. I think that's extremely beneficial for the continent as a whole. Definitely. Um, like we spoke about this before, the potential within Africa, the, the land of just from, I'll describe it, the land of Eden. I went there six months ago and the opportunity was so vast. Everywhere you look, just so much potential. Um, And you touched on on remittances from the diaspora. A lot of African countries had these um, well over 10 years ago um, where they were just uh, transferring money through their mobile phones. Um, So that's why I asked that question, how would cryptocurrency benefit africa and i feel like the transition will be so seamless because we've already been using these methods beforehand literally sending money so in, in kenya there's a um a business called m so yeah. what you would do is literally 
put money onto your phone number uh, through these um, small hubs, kiosks, and then text just input some uh, that might you want to send, followed by a text message, and you can send up to a thousand dollars instantly. So that's quite useful, bro. So fast, anywhere you go in the country, you can money's there. So your phone is literally a wallet. Mm. Um, so that's why I asked that question. And if crypto, if us Africans um, invested more into crypto and the technology behind it, which we already basically have, it just boosts the whole economy, in, in, in my opinion. Yeah. Um, only thing is, I'm not sure if it will be as frictionless as you, you assume. I think that... Uh, before we get to the stage where we're using blockchain te technology and we're doing instant trans transactions, everything along those lines is like an incremental sort of shift that needs to happen each time. And each step is when we start Absolutely. adopting more technology and then we get more like sort of um, comfortable with using them. And then ultimately we can go to cryptocurrencies. But if we could take that leap, I think that'd be amazing. It'll be, it'll be great. A bit more on blockchain. Um, Dubai has introduced earlier this year, 2020, that they're going their, their government, government is going to be powered by blockchain. Um, so when I read through that, um, that's what piqued my interest. I was thinking, what if more African countries um, adapted uh, in this form as well? Um, that would be very beneficial. Um, more people would oh, have yeah. documents. Uh, people would, just the transparency between uh, the government and the citizens. Yeah, I could think of a few uses why the government would need the, the blockchain and the, the audibility. <laughs> but I'm not gonna I'm not gonna touch on that. I'm not gonna be uh, an activist that's, right now. That's a topic for another day. Maybe exactly off camera because we can be we can talk about that for hours, bro. <laughs> exactly. And um, so let's talk about how did you come to start Crypt Central and what was that like for you? Did you just stumble across it or was it just like yeah. a um, eureka moment where you said, this is what I'm going to do and I'm going to stick with this? I think um, very few startups or any, very few inventions are sort of like a eureka moment. I think it's always incremental. So with Cryptcentra, it started when I lost that money and I was thinking, why did I lose this money? Of course, I obviously didn't make the right investment decisions. But when I was looking at the sort of fundamentals of the cryptocurrency space, I was thinking hmm, there wasn't enough sort of infrastructure for me to gather this information. I was just at the start of my finance degree. So I, I didn't understand finance as well as I do now. And in cryptocurrency specifically, data is everywhere. It's fragmented, right? So if you want to have a clear picture on one asset, you probably need to use like 20 sources to and then put everything together, aggregate it, and then you get your clear, clear picture. Yeah, the average, for the average yeah. yeah, for the average person, that's one, very difficult to do, and two, it's very time-consuming. So for me, I was thinking, okay, I feel that I could start with like a news platform. So initially, the idea of Crypt Central was news. And then was, I was working on that for a bit and sort of realized that there's way more than just news, and that's super one-dimensional. So I met my co-founders, Iola and Joseph, and my um, strategy advisor, Tony Fodlade. And then uh, we sort of ideated, bounced back and forth. I had a call with Io, and I um, told him about the idea. He loved it, and he literally, five minutes later, he sketched on a napkin. <laughs> and he's like showing us the, like, the, the system architecture diagram. It like, sounds like a movie how, already. Yeah, exactly, how everything would fit together. If you click this, what would happen? And literally, five minute, a 30-minute call, he managed to do that. And I had a call with Joseph, and uh, Joseph was super, super skilled. At, I wouldn't even say talented, and he's super skilled at cryptocurrency and trading and investment, and he's just super knowledgeable. And then Tony, and then just literally like serendipity and everything was just working together. And ever since we've been working on Crypt Central. Um, sounds definitely sounds like a strong team. Uh, can you tell us a bit more of how the team was formed? Yeah. So initially, I had a call with Tony, and he sort of created a group chat on WhatsApp and just like a, a lot of black young men who are into tech, into business and just doing their thing. So I was part of that group chat, there's about 60 of us and we were talking and I realized that Io and Joseph were very into like the space and I felt that I could work very well with them. So I scheduled a call with Tony and asked them more about, asked him more about them and to see their character, gaze their character and if he would sort of vouch for them, which he strongly did. And then I had a call with them and then we started working on it. 
And it's funny because when we started working on it, we were actually a team now. We were officially Crip Central. Um, <laughs> we didn't actually meet. So we were working remotely until July. So from March to July, we were just, everything was online. We hadn't met in person. And it was super rudimentary how we were working as a startup because we were like assigning tasks, having calls like every day, speaking every day, or we'd never met in person. Wow. So yeah, a lot of people thought I was crazy to give people that I'd never met equity in my company. But I think when I'm personally, I personally feel like I'm a strong judge of character, but when you click with people, you know, sort of their intentions, I hope. And um, yeah, so far it's been amazing. Not a single disagreement, like we work so well together. And I couldn't have asked for better co-founders, to be honest. Uh, that's great, man. Literally um, transitioning um, over to the virtual realm of business now, that story would seem very casual and normal now, but you've done it yeah. maybe, what, was it two years ago? Or just uh, no, uh, under the two the last, Just the last year. Last year. So yeah. literally, um, you've seen the opportunity and you just went for it. Um, yeah. And that's that's really important. Like, as Naval said, nine times out of ten meetings are very useless. Uh, so for to do to do that all virtually and save so much time and have mm. that much um, get that much done uh, is very great to see. Yeah. Um, so a bit more of how the team was formed, though. How did how was everything structured? Was it through Zoom calls? Um, mm. So to start with, we created a WhatsApp group chat and that was sort of where we were sort of ideating what we need to do next. And when we had sort of clear defined tasks and objectives for a certain timeline, we would then put them on an app called Trello. So on Trello, you, you sort of like you have different boards and you can assign tasks and add comments and everything along those lines. So that's how we did that. And then when everything was done, we would add them to a Google Drive. And once they're on our drive, we would go on to the next task and just keep working through it like that. Oh, great. Um, Cello is a powerful app. Um, whoever is looking to start a business or looking or already has a business and looking to assign tasks, um, Cello is a powerful app. And to leverage these these tech apps uh, will save you so much time and 100%. just put order to or, or systemize the process. Um, as the saying goes, time is money and use, leveraging these apps will save you a lot of time to focus on other areas of the business. Um, so thank you for mentioning that, bro. So what are the best resources that has helped you along the way? Uh, um, <laughs> that's, a, that's difficult to say. I think it's just, honestly, super cliche. I'm not trying to be cliche throughout this interview, but it's the team. Like when you work well together, you work well together. If there's any bit of friction, it's going to hinder your progress. With us, it's so frictionless. Like, I'll say to I or Joseph, like, let's do this. Or they'll say to me, can we do this? And we'll just get working to it, working on it immediately. And in the space of a couple of days or a couple of weeks, depending on how sort of time-consuming the task is, we'll have it done to a very high standard. And then we'll add our input and we're completely, completely objective and super honest because we feel that's important. Where if something isn't as great or we feel that something doesn't make sense, we'll be vocal about it and we'll make the necessary improvements. And um, that's helped a lot because when you're sort of pitching your ideas to people or introducing to new people who aren't part of your team and who have a completely objective view, they might try and poke holes at it or anything along those lines. But since we've already had these discussions, we already have like the rebuttals for everything. So if they say this, we have an answer that makes sense and we've proven sort of their doubts or whatever it is. Definitely. And that synergy and transparency is very, very important uh, before you go into um, a pitch. Uh, once you're seeking funding so we're just going to a bit more about the funding process um what was it like for you and um what did you learn the funding process or the funding process funding process okay yeah um so the funding process we were still in the, the process of starting it it's uh it's not as easy as you think like i thought it was just have some leads have some interest have some social media followers some nice posts and everything along those lines a website and then register and that's it no, but there's a yeah. lot there's a there's a lot more to it because you're going then you're asking for six, multiple six figure sums they're not just going to throw money at you like that so, oh, of course not. so yeah we've we've we're very 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 close now to starting the fundraising process we're super super close and we have some great people on board who are helping us with that and of course a person on our advisory board two people on our advisory board have been funded 
or acquired. So yeah, we we're in the right the right place and with, with the right people. Um, what I'd say though is make sure you have every single detail down if you're going to start fundraising, because if you go to an, into a pitch and you cannot answer a question, just consider that 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 lead burnt Finished. because first impressions, especially when you're asking for such a for such a sum, first impressions are are critical. And also, I'd say you need to have warm leads. So if you can sort of build a connection, fortunately, every sort of investor we've looked at so far, although we haven't made contact with them, we have connections with them. And through those connections, you have warm introductions. And they pretty much, maybe it's not right, maybe it can be considered nepotism, but um, in the venture capital industry or space, it's always warm leads. So if you know someone who knows a VC, they're going to put you on top of the pile of sorts of people to interview. And they're going to listen to you more than they would have listened to you if they didn't know that you had a mutual connection. So definitely sort of widen your horizon and try and sort of capitalize on warm leads and connections you have. 100%. Um, it's a very old saying, but it's still very relevant. Your network is your net worth. Um, so essentially, the people who you are around and surround yourself with are the people that are going to lift you up to higher planes and introduce you to the people you will need say five ten twenty years down the line so yeah. it's really really great to network with the right people and establish those business relationships and just to yeah. base that on trust and credibility yeah and if i may add i feel that you need to be realistic as well of course as founders you're very optimistic but you can't go into a fundraising pitch and have pretty much zero evidence of product market fit and expect to have like a million pound valuation or anything along those lines. And I also think that focusing on valuation is completely wrong. Yes, in tech, you, you generally have higher valuations than you, you, you would if you were to start any other business. And that's just because, as Naval said, tech products are, there's no marginal cost for replication. So because they're infinitely scalable, hypothetically, um, you have higher valuations. But don't focus on that because a lot of people um, I spoke to a lot of people and when they're looking at fundraising, even just speaking about it like in a sort of, oh, if I could, they think about, if I could raise this sum at this valuation, that means my shares are worth this amount and I'm worth this amount. I think that's super, super dangerous. Very dangerous. So definitely, I definitely advise against that. Um, thank you very much. So, given everything that you've learned so far throughout this whole process, what would you do differently and why? Um, I don't know if I'd say I'd do it differently because my hands were tied, but um, if I was to say that, it'd be to continue sort of balancing my time perfectly throughout my undergraduate degree because we've been working on Cryptcentra for a year and four months, but that timeline is super inflated because final year of university I had to take a really big hiatus and really like focus on my degree and sort of get a good grade on that because I didn't want definitely. to sort of, yeah, exactly. So in terms of how long we've actually been working on the business, it's not a year and four months because we've had all of these things come up. Um, so I'd say if we could, we'd juggle our time better. But um, now I'm taking a year out to work on Crip Central full time and we're going to see where it goes. Perfect. So before we move on, is there anything you want to debunk in the crypt, uh, cryptocurrency space and, and just to educate our listeners? Um, so one of the things that one of the first things that come to mind is sort of the cryptocurrency has no um, intrinsic value. I think that's ridiculous to say because people compare cryptocurrency to, for example, uh, the US dollar, and they're saying the US dollar holds intrinsic value, whereas cryptocurrency doesn't. But they simply look at the name of fiat currency. It means it's, if you look at the definition, it, it basically means that there's no sort of backing in terms of the value it's just more so supply and demand and what the government tell you, tells you is worth. crypto does worth. honestly blow fiat currency out of the water um, 100%. the transaction rate uh, the speed at which it travels across the world and just the value it uh, incurs over time as a commodity and infl inflation and deflation if you look at a sort of the us dollar the purchasing power in 1900 so like say 19 1900 right and compared to 2000 it will be a massively declining sort of graph because the purchasing power has decreased a lot. That's why $1,000 back in 1900 is a lot more in 2000. 100%. Um, so who are the three people who have influenced you 
the most throughout your entrepreneurial journey um it could be the past year or it could be from when you was very young and, and started out and you know business was uh, the way for you um so for me i take inspiration from a whole host of people um if you look at my twitter for example i'm not focused on ratios i think i just want to follow as many people as i can and extract value from so what i try to do is we had this we spoke about this on the last conversation is i make sure my social media feeds are constantly full of things that can value. sort of add value to my life exactly and that way if i'm on social media i don't feel guilty for doing so so yeah i take inspiration from a lot of people a lot of friends i make sure the people that are around me can truly inspire me because if someone doesn't inspire me it definitely makes me sort of reconsider my friendship or relationship with them um that's one of the crucial aspects of everything for me definitely so we'll we'll uh, speak more about that but i just want to give that value um that extract the value from what you said now and yeah. uh, pass it on to our guests social media could be used in two ways it could be from a distraction from your current uh, state to where you are or it could be used to leverage and to educate yourself the people you follow uh, and the information you consume will eventually consume you and consume the way you do things, the way you say things, uh, and just the way you interact. So if you follow authors, if you follow CEOs, if you follow um, these business pages that constantly churn out value, you will like more time always take that in. So yeah. just remember what you consume consumes you and uh, just follow um, people wisely. Instagram, if you're not finding value from Instagram, um, mute a couple of pages. You don't have to unfollow them. Um, just mute a couple of pages. But I like Twitter. Twitter is where yeah. I mostly like. Twitter is. I would like say two years ago. I'll call it distraction. It used to be the fun, funnest um, app yeah. platform, jokes. But you also see nonsense. Something that would never add value to your life. And when you read a tweet or you see people arguing on the TL. Um, constantly what is actually doing for you uh, it's doing um, more bad than good um, so just over two years ago now I unfollowed mo- majority of my um, Twitter audience and started following my favourite authors um, other podcasters and um, people that are that have specific knowledge in different uh, niches so that could be economics it could be uh, cryptocurrency it could be um, health and fitness uh, and just learning as much as i can from the fields that i want to learn from so my biggest advice to you is leverage these apps so you can constantly learn new things and just be up to date not many people are using apps in this way but if you do you definitely definitely will see a massive a massive mindset shift and um, you will just learn uh, a lot more um, if you use uh, your time. Agreed. Big facts. <laughs> <laughs> Big facts. Um, so, my brother, having said that, what Twitter accounts would you recommend to our listeners? Oh, I can't remember from the top of my head. Can I get an, can I get some on my phone? Yeah, absolutely, um, absolutely. All right. It is a tough question. Yeah. More time so, we're, we're looking at the tweets, not not the names. Yeah. And a lot of the time they're retweeting people as well, so I'll probably go through my likes. Do you get push notifications from your favourite accounts? I do not. It's just because um, when I'm working, I don't like anything popping up because it like, breaks my focus and my, my train of thought. Definitely. Do you? Um, I do, but um, I muted so i turned off push notifications on my phone so mm-hmm. it will just give me a notification um like you know um what's it called let's have a look so yeah so you know the bell icon mm-hmm. so every time i open that up i can just instead of going through the timeline i'll just go yeah. I, i'll get the notifications on the bell section uh on mm-hmm. the notifications yeah, yeah, yeah. so i just go through that so that way yeah. i'm extracting the most value um, I can from the favorite accounts, um, the few people. Um, yeah. And I just don't follow people blindly. Oh, I see a good tweet. Uh, for example, if I see a good tweet, I'm not going to follow them straight away. Um, I audit what they tweet about. 
So if I see if I see three good tweets that I like and I've gained value from, they will get a follow. And if I yeah. see more, um, and it's a consistent thing they're doing, then I will put on the push notifications because I want to learn more from this individual. I want to learn more about what they're talking about, and um, I want to spread the message uh, to you guys. Uh, so yeah, who's your top three um, accounts that you want to give to our listeners today? Yeah, so in terms of top three, I really could narrow it. I think for me, I, I follow like venture capitalists and I follow um, I follow a lot of business pages, so CEOs. I follow Y Combinator startups. And from there, I extract a lot of value. So if someone wanted to find these valuable pages I was speaking on, I think a good place to start is going Y Combinator and sort of look at their following because a lot they follow a lot of their startups. Definitely. And you look at, the, you, you sort of, you're exposed to the mindset of these these founders who got into a, a really, really competitive program that's amazing. And you're sort of indirectly gaining Y Combinator knowledge without being on Y Combinator. So I think that's that's amazing. And with the VCs as well, um, apart from just the fundraising landscape and them like, sort of updating you on what's happening there, they also tell you like startup stories. They give you loads of like anecdotes. And I think it's super important to sort of be in the mind of a VC before you fundraise or just in general, it helps a lot because they're super knowledgeable. Big facts. Um, literally, <laughs> um, I couldn't have put it better myself. Um, so just to get our listeners to, you know, get on the plane of um, following these high value accounts, I'm just going to put three out there. There's many more, but just to keep it simple for just starting out, I'd say follow number one, Naval. So that's at N-A-V-A-L. Number two, I've been following this account for six months now. And just the value that's just constantly being churned out, it's literally invaluable. Like everything I've learned from just simple tweets, what is it now, 240 characters? Um, and you'll also find threads very very valuable and that is at jack butcher um he has a background in design um for working for agencies uh, working in an agency now he runs his own agency and um online business um he works with the likes of ferrari uh, and other big name brands um and now he just teaches teaches that and um makes a um, Make, uh, makes a considerable amount online leveraging his time and his expertise and the third account i would recommend is lux conduct um, so that's at lux conduct l-u-x-c-o-n-d-u-c-t um, and this account tweets a lot about mindset and uh, just procrastination um, and just touches up on ways you can leverage your time by using systems um every day is a new um every day just a new set of value um i just can't get enough of it uh, so i highly recommend it to our listeners so that's three accounts naval jack butcher and lux conduct all on twitter and you can whilst you're at it you can also follow at checkmate theory because i'll be dropping some value too Thank you very much, bro. So we're going to go move over to, I'd say, the most interesting question because our listeners will get to know who you are on a deeper level and, you know, just get to know who you are and where your vision um, st is steered towards. So if you had £100 million, how would you spend it and why? So the first thing that comes to mind is I'd start an infrastructure investment trust. Um, I'd go to Africa and I'd work on sort of getting contracts to build railway systems, build hospitals, roads, and everything along those lines. Um, yeah, that's not completely altruistic because starting a trust is, is very lucrative, but I definitely feel it's important to add value to the lives of those people who are in unfortunate situations. Um, but if we're speaking on sort of me and like the little, the little sort of, um, indulgences I'll have probably get a nice car <laughs> a very nice car or a which couple. car are you thinking? Um, my favourite car would probably be just for the sake of it and just to say I did it it has to be a Rolls Royce Phantom because it was like my dream car as a kid um, so yeah 100% that I like the elegance 
I'm not too much of a, a supercar kind of guy, although I probably would indulge down the line. But um, yeah, definitely. Beautiful, the beautiful car, money. Man. What color? Yeah, the bulk. white. Black. Has black. To be black. Yeah, black, black exterior, black interior. Ooh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow. Exactly. I but could yeah, picture, the picture of... it now, but if I was to get a Rolls Royce, yeah, um, I just love the all white. Any other car, mm. I'll get um, sky blue or ice okay. blue as they call it. But the Rolls Royce, oh, it just it just looks good in white, man. Yeah, yeah. But for me, I think all my cars be black, hundred percent. So yeah, it go it goes well with the brand Crypt Central. Um, I don't think yeah. they've seen the the hood. Because so I was going to ask yeah. you about the the logo. Well, this is it's, so basically, if you wear it downwards, it's upside down like this. Yeah. When yeah. you wear it down the correct way, it says Crypt Central for everyone else. It's for your advertising, and yeah. then it's like uh, Crypt Central here as well. Nice one. So, um, just for the branding side of things, how yeah. did you come up with your logo? I didn't design it. So. Logo is actually a funny story. Um, I outsourced someone, paid them to design a logo. First one, we really liked it. And we were putting it all over our social medias. We got the copyright transfer, everything. And funnily enough, I somehow, I don't know how, I stumbled across a company that had the exact same logo. And they were a tiny company. Ooh. I was thinking, he literally must have either stolen this concept or it's super generic that I could find this without even looking for it. So I contacted, him. No, I contacted him and said, um, I'd like a refund because we don't want a logo that's super similar to everything else that's mm-hmm. on the market. So um, he gave us a refund and said, I think he's, he's a very apologetic. So he's sort of implying that he knew it wasn't a, an original concept. Yeah. Um, of course, it's, it's like there's an unlimited amount of ideas you can have for a logo. So I wouldn't have blamed him if he didn't know, but it seemed like he knew. And he gave a refund. It happens a lot, bro. It happens a lot yeah. when you use... Um, and, these web platforms like yeah. Fiverr or Upwork, um, mm-hmm. but we will touch on that on a on a different episode or um, different podcast. Yeah. But just getting IP online, you do yeah. really have to audit and look around um, yeah. just to see if it's not being replicated. Because if you've noticed, if you notice that, say a year later, that would be so detriment, uh, detrimental to yeah. your whole business. And what you've been working on up till then. Exactly. Uh, but yeah, definitely and, we will talk about that on another podcast. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then just to finish the story, um, when we got the refund, then I hired a new designer, gave him a super, super detailed brief, and then gave him loads and loads of sort of reference points. And then he came up with the, this, the iconic oh, That's a really, symbol. really cool logo. <laughs> it's a really great logo. Um, yeah. I think you mentioned it before. You said it's like a link. Um, yeah. So exactly. can you talk a bit more about that? So um, the link is just sort of uh, a play on the, the the concept of blockchain. Blockchain, So yeah. I sent him loads of uh, symbols and logos, like I said, references. And I said to him, I wanted a nice symbol that's super catchy. And when you see it, you know what it represents. So he went for the, the CC that's linked. And... Um, Although it doesn't immediately stream lo- blockchain, but you can see very it's memorable. Like, yeah, you know, and, it's uh, symbolic of a, a that's very strategic to have uh, a memorable logo. It's yeah, just icing on the cake. Um, yeah. strategy... You need to be deliberate when you're starting a business. Everything needs to make sense. It can't just be for the sake of it. You need to mean like absolutely everything. Hundred percent, and everything needs to complement each other. Yeah, um, just to have that synergy go in. It just amplifies the. Um, the business voice and um, it will definitely create a solid brand yeah a solid brand and will definitely definitely attract the customers you are looking for so brand identity is very fundamental um, to any business okay so one bitcoin costs 7,600 pounds today given current world affairs What's your price prediction for the next halving? I know it's uh, very hard yeah. to predict that, but I just you know just wanted to throw that at you because you might be right. It would be cool to yeah. you know in four years' time go back to this video and say, "Oh, mm-hmm. I said that." That's yeah. the only reason why I put that question there. I think my answer is going to be super underwhelming, 
for me, I'm, I'm literally, of course, we know that's going to go up in value because it's designed yeah. to do so. Like the supply is decreasing. And, and I only picked uh, Bitcoin because that's what majority yeah. of our listeners might only, you know, yeah. know about so far. Uh, but there are, yeah. there are so many other coins that could be much more um, profitable, profitable than Bitcoin. But we'll just stick with this one just for the simplicity of it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, um, yeah, I know that Bitcoin's going to go up in value eventually, but I don't like focusing on the price. Um, like we could very well see a six million Bitcoin. Um, I'm very inclined to say that we will. Um, I could almost, actually, I'm not going to say anything more than that because <laughs> this is not fin- this is not financial advice. No. But um, yeah, I think we'll, we will see a six figure Bitcoin. Um, when we'll see that, I'm not going to try and pinpoint. Um, but I think that people need to understand the value of what Bitcoin is on a fundamental aspect. And what it's it actually deflationary. Do. It's deflationary supply. So, so supply is always decreasing and the supply is, I mean, the demand is increasing. Just simple economics, you know that it's bound to go up in value. Definitely. As long as demand stays at the very least constant. And we already know just by looking at gold and other natural resources, the more scarcity is, when scarcity is involved, the value shoots up. And every year with the Bitcoin halving, um, Bitcoin is harder and harder to mine. So mm-hmm. it will eventually become so scarce that the prices shoots up. Yeah, exactly. Um, so I, I saw an interesting, um, an interesting chart before. It's super boring for some people, but uh, I think it might be important to say. Um, I think I'll see that to, one uh, as well. To, to maintain Bitcoin's price, halving. it needs to be. Four hundred million dollars of new money into the market every month, but with halving, it only needs to be two hundred million. So if you imagine we stay at that four hundred million, what do you think is going to happen? Um, yeah, the price will go up. Hundred percent. Just moving off that, or might not be moving off that. If you read books around Bitcoin or cryptocurrency, what is your favorite book and why? And I say book yeah. because you can't have mm-hmm. many favorites, but yeah. what's the one that? really impacts you and the way you think and what's given you the most ideas so far so right now the i'd say the one i'm reading right now is probably my favorite um it's called how to fly a horse and it's about the sequence of innovation and sort of debunking the myths of innovation and invention um that's why i mentioned before that innovation isn't something that's a eureka moment um prior to reading that book i, I assumed that it was like just like a Oh yeah, that would make sense. And sometimes you do get that, but when you really, really think about it, it's super incremental, and um, it just speaks on how um, people assume that Mozart he just would sleep and then he the, the melodies would come to him and he'd play it in the morning or anything along those lines. But it really, really doesn't happen like that. And I think it's important to realize your thought process and pay attention to it, so that way you can come up with clear and concise ideas that do ultimately become big, influential, or sort of transitional ideas definitely small incremental gains amount to big wins so yeah, exactly. if you consistently do or if you are consistently productive and you know you have um say successful habits it could be very small it could be just the way you write things the way you um brand uh, promote or the way you just do anything um say so in the army their their habit is to as soon as they wake up they do the bed so just small stuff like that the more you do it you're not you don't see what it's doing for you now and there and then but the more you do it and the mindset shift you have um then you will see the big gains okay and um, where can our listeners connect with you online so on social media, Twitter, Instagram, um, I'm at Alpha Cargo. Um, Alpha Cargo is not is it's taken; it's not available. So it's A L P H, and then K A R G B O. Um, my Twitter, super niche. Um, I post just random ideas, notes to self. I don't really use it that much, but I'm gonna try and start using it more. On my Instagram, I'm super M I on M I A on there, but uh, I'll start using that soon as well. And um, if you want to follow Crip Central. On Twitter at Cryptcentra, C R Y P C E N T R A, and the same on Instagram, the same on Medium. Um, big things coming soon. We're pretty much 
I want to say stealth, but we're not stealth because we have social media platforms out. But um, we're just dormant right now, focusing on building the product. We're very, very soon. We have amazing things in the pipeline. And this product that we're building is going to be, it's going to be huge in the industry. And Bro, it looks it amazing. Works. Outside looking in. Um, and the yeah, massive... I wish you uh, could see the, <laughs> Bro, the it does, it does, look, am- it does yeah. look amazing, man. Um, yeah. And I, we do look forward to having you back on here just to you know, go through what you've done and um, obviously give us, uh, keep us in the loop. Um, but just outside looking in, it looks amazing. And yeah. if you guys don't know already what Crypt Center is, it's an online platform filled with value, all the information you need and uh, has the current charts of most of the cryptocurrencies, I believe. Yeah, so it's uh, an analytic, analytics platform that focuses on helping our users assess assets beyond just the price. So every other platform just gives you price, maybe 24-hour change in price and then volume. Very surface level stuff. But if you really want to assess an asset and understand it, we have all the deep, deep metrics and analytics that you need. I'm not going to expose what we have just yet, but uh, we have got some amazing things in the pipeline. Yeah. And we're going to have the, the best, the best portfolio management in the cryptocurrency space. That's a fact. You heard it here first. If you are looking for financial sovereignty, Cryptcentra is for you that brings me on to my last question the signature question my brother alpha carbo this one has to be the most the answer has to be the most jam-packed of value Mm -hmm. uh, because this is what our audience will remember you for yeah so alpha carbo what is your checkmate theory i could sum that up in four words um brute force and adaptability so for me i feel that if you want to have anything in this life you need to absolutely keep going keep going be completely resilient and push through all the barriers and obstacles you have and keep going and never be tired or if you don't feel like doing something one day you have to you have to force yourself to to want to do it because when you think about it although it's not a, a finite game um the days you take the days you take off someone else is going to be working and outworking you so brute force is 100%. extremely important and then you need to be adaptable. If something's not working, you need to realize, take a step back and say, why isn't this working? How can I fix this and how can I get around this obstacle? Because if you're constantly doing the same thing, even if you have brute force and you're completely resilient, it's not going to work for you. So brute force and adaptability. Again, that was perfect. Um, adaptability is very important. If you know what you're doing is currently not working out, you need to step back, pivot and make the right move. And that's what the checkmate theory is about. Thank you very much, my brother. Um, I wish you well. And uh, I am rooting for you. And I will, um, you know, be there through the process of actually seeing the change because it's a really, really cool project and business you're working on. And um, I know literally super interested in what it's supposed to become. It's it's so big um, that... I'm I'm surprised not many people know about it so far, yeah. but uh, it is really a game changer. So again, at Cryptcentra, uh, you can find them on cryptcentra.com. You don't want to miss yeah. out on this one. Um, again, if you are seeking financial sovereignty and to get the best information out there, this is for you. We are the go-to. <laughs> Literally, if Thank you think you so about crypto, if you think cryptocurrency and investing, think Crypt Central. That's all I can say. Exactly. But yeah, thank you so much for having me, and it's been amazing speaking to you again. Let's definitely keep in touch more often, and um, I'm excited to come on again. And hopefully, next time we can have the, the whole team. The whole team. No, that'd be that'd, be, that'd yeah. be great. That'd be great. Thank you very much, yeah. my bro, and uh, we'll keep in touch. Hundred percent. Thank you. Thank you guys for listening. Have a nice day. Take care.